Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Maybe you're wondering, why the red? Why the special music? It's Reformation Sunday, where we celebrate the uh, uh, Reformation of the church that Martin Luther started back in 1517 when he nailed the 95 theses on the uh, church door in Wittenberg, Germany, and started quite a mess <laughs> throughout Europe in reforming the church. And that word reform, what does it mean? It means basically to change. Usually for improvement is something reformed. And in Luther's case, it was changing some of the teachings of the church at that time, which weren't really good practices there, especially reforming it from the selling and buying of something called indulgences. Indulgences were basically pieces of paper that people could purchase from the church that would be like a kind of get-out-of-hell-free card or to get you out of years of suffering in purgatory. And also, Luther was against the viewing of relics that you could go to, to see and worship old items that had to do something to do with the apostles, like a piece of their fingernail or some of their hair, stuff like that. People could go and see these things, and you would get more pieces of paper that would say, you get out of hell free kind of card here. And basically, what Luther was trying to change was the idea that you could purchase or, or get on your own your salvation. And this was all prompted, first of all, by Luther's own personal reforming, his, his changing. See, because Luther was a, was a Roman Catholic monk, and he struggled painfully under this delusion that forgiveness had to be earned that money or pious acts or even self-inflicted punishment, that would satisfy God's demands that people be righteous. This is what Luther, Luther struggled with until he, he actually read the Bible, especially the book of Romans, which is our epistle reading for today, part of it here. And part of those verses we read today were the righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. And we are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And one more. We hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Luther found out and discovered from the Scriptures that people are justified and made righteous by faith in Jesus Christ. Not by works, not by paying money, or by going to see relics, or by doing righteous acts, or even by, by punishing yourself. The righteousness that saves us isn't ours. It's not ours to, to make or to affect, or to create. Righteousness is God's gift to us through Jesus Christ, through His works, through His death, and His resurrection from the dead. And for Luther, realizing this was really quite mind-blowing to him. When, when he really was reformed and changed by the reading of the Scriptures, this, and he said this, he said, when I discovered this, meaning that we are saved by grace through faith and not by works. He said, when I discovered this, I was born again of the Holy Ghost. It's like the doors of paradise swung open and I could go in. Luther was personally reformed and changed. And then he brought this to the church. Now, perhaps you know that same feeling of reform, of knowing that you're forgiven by God's grace through faith in what Jesus has done for you, of you've, you've been changed by Christ's death 
and his resurrection from the dead. And in that, you are declared righteous and justified and forgiven. Maybe that's also a feeling of paradise for you, that you've done something that was particularly bad, or at least you felt that way, and that faith in Christ has reformed you. His grace and forgiveness have completely changed you. Maybe you know that feeling. Maybe you know that truth. That whatever you've done, no matter how bad it was or how even bad it seemed, that God's grace and forgiveness are yours in Christ. And they have reformed you, changed you, and forgiven you. Well, in our world today, there's a lot of talk about reforming things. Health care reform, tax reform, social security reform, finance reform, immigration reform. All kinds of form reform that, that the government is trying to do, but there's also personal reformation, personal reforming, working out, various diets, yoga, therapy, counseling, all ways of change, hopefully for improvement. And people like to reform things in their lives. They like to reform their finances or their careers, maybe some relationships, but reform sometimes isn't always for improvement. I know for students in, in, in college at, at, at UT, uh, it's often a criticism of colleges and universities that they, they try to reform and change religious people, and especially Christians, into thinking against their faith and changing that. I pray that doesn't happen to our students at, at ULC. And worse, there's, there's personal reform that's trying to, 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 to go on in you, and, and that is the devil. He's trying to reform you, to tempt you, to get you to go against God's laws and God's designs for us. You know, things that you know are wrong. But the devil tries to. To reform that. He tries to reform your thinking about sin and he gets you to think, no, it's okay. You know, it's not that bad. It's not hurting anybody. But even when we know how it works, sometimes we still fall for it, don't we? We still fall for the devil's lies and his temptations and his attempts to reform us. After all, it does say in Scripture that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Satan tries to reform us with his lies. But Jesus had a lot to say about this. And, what, and especially, he said to his disciples, he, says, he said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. How true that is. That we have been changed. We have been reformed by Christ. We've been set free from the devil's attempts at reforming us. You are free in the forgiveness of Christ. And in Christ, you truly are free. You, you are reformed, if you will, by His love and His forgiveness for you. In, your, in, your, in your, your natural life, and we even say this in the, in, the, in the confession, we are by nature sinful and unclean. But you've been reformed. You've been changed. At times I know it's hard to accept or feel changed by Christ or feel free in His forgiveness, but you are. But you know that there are things in your life that still need reformation. There's changes that you need to make, and maybe some of those are on the spiritual side of your life, things, things that you need to leave in God's hands for Him to reform you. There's things that you know that you probably need to let go of and let Christ completely reform you, things that you're doing, sins that you're committing that you probably need to hand over 
to Jesus and let him reform you and change you with his forgiveness. That's personally, but also collectively here, Hope Lutheran Church, you're now, if you haven't been counting, 10 months into your vacancy, and you want the reformation of a new pastor, don't you? <laughs> You'd welcome that change, wouldn't you? <laughs> but you've got a call issued to a pastor, and we continue to pray for God's reforming work for all of you in the call process, and, and a reforming of you for a vital future in this part of Austin, and the dire need of the gospel to reform so many people here in this area, this part of Austin, that need to hear that. May that be your focus. Now, 10 months in and have a call issued, may that be your focus and, and rejoicing in God's reforming of you and that God's reformation that you can offer to others outside of this building and inside of it too, right? <laughs> may each of you be reformed, changed, and forgiven by Christ's love as you're reformed as a congregation and being changed and experiencing change as you call a new pastor. This world can change so much, so quickly, for good or not, right? <laughs> changes come and changes happen for good or for not. But one place to make certain of good changes of, of constructive reformation is in Jesus' love for you. May God grant it so. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Before we get the